reasons or the causes of, of human trafficking, of migration, and how to defeat it. Our, the policies of the United States and the European countries that are behind, that are the drivers of Eritrean migration and human trafficking. Um, I'm a victim of human trafficking. I am Eritrean. Um, and my story starts in 2012, March, when I decided to leave Eritrea because I couldn't continue to survive there. I fled the regime and went to Sudan and uh, made it safely to the refugee camp called Shagarab near Kasala. Unfortunately, a couple of weeks later, I was kidnapped along with uh, two other refugees, Eritrean refugees, and we were chained up and brought to North Sudan. <laughs> For all your suffering, who do you think is first to blame? The regime back home, the regime that's calling itself the democratic government of Eritrea. No, no, that's, that's the one I blame. More than the Bedouins, more than the Rashidas, I blame the Eritrean regime. One day, my mom calls and says they had managed to collect the $30,000. For me, it was impossible. Like, I did not believe her. I thought she was trying to, you know, uh, boost my morale by just giving me false hope. But it turned out they did collect $30,000 um, from friends all over the world, um, relatives. And you can't force anyone to believe, but... If someone denies all, you know, the human trafficking cycle that exists from Sudan to Egypt, with all the evidence that's available today, with all the testimonies of victims of human trafficking coming out and speaking out, um, then that person could either be, well, an idiot or trying to feign deliberate ignorance. Mm -hmm. Crossing the desert, if I had an option to board a plane in Khartoum and then go to Israel, I would never have done so. I never had any intention to go to Europe, uh, I never had intention to go to the States. Um, my kind of skills, my kind of profession are in great demand in Africa right now. Uh, Sudan and Angola especially. And um, these were my two uh, designated uh, destinations. I had, like I said, I had no intention of coming here originally mm, because I could live a comfortable life there um, and get my family out and that's it, but... This place has to speak a lot, has to shout for the people who are voiceless. The first time you, you, you overheard the, the first evidence? I couldn't believe it. I thought they were making up in order to, to, to sympathize with them. But then it repeats and uh, you see also on their bodies tortured. Then, then you say, yeah, it is true. You have, to, you have to believe. How many people did you meet who told you this story? Uh, more than 300 people. And we are still continuing. While we are speaking, there are people there, no? Actually, yesterday I received that 150 were prisoners and they were taken from one place to another. The world is silence, and the silence, they have to break the silence of the world. Nobody is taking step, and this is what makes me sad.